probably will uh, you will need to um accept it i think okay so slowly slowly and just make sure everyone is uh, ready um so uh, thank you so much for uh, for your trust for joining this course uh, my name is basha and i will be taking you through this process uh, i will introduce myself uh, shortly because i think um, we want to have as much time as possible on the process uh, rather than me talking about my experience and my, you know, and myself. Um, so I, um, I was um, trained uh, in iconography speci very specifically uh, in Poland. There is a college that, is a, that has a four-year uh, full-time program where you learn all the techniques uh, um, so connected to iconography that we use in iconography, but also you learn uh, all the theory as well, theology um, and conservation, art history. Uh, so it's a very um, uh, complete uh, program that really, really uh, allows you to learn uh, this process and the whole tradition uh, very deeply. Uh, so I feel very lucky and privileged that I was able to um, do something like this. And uh, just after graduating, I came to Edinburgh. And since then, I have been uh, teaching people here uh, in Scotland, uh, in different parts of UK and outside of UK as well. So the project Edinburgh School of Icon Painting, um, it's all, it started in 2013 and it's been a, a wonderful experience being able to share um, this beautiful tradition with people and the practice, the practice um, of um, painting icons or some people say writing icons, it's a very special practice. Uh, so I'm hoping to um, give you this um, um, skills that you need, information skills uh, that you need for this practice so you can take this practice further. Uh, of course, some of you probably will just do the course, uh, but I'm hoping you will be doing it um, even after the course. Um, this course is a um, starting point. Uh, it's, um, it, um, takes into account that you haven't done, you know, it. Uh, I'm thinking that you haven't done um, even any art whatsoever. That doesn't matter. It's okay to start like this. Uh, we will be, you will be uh, able to see me uh, paint, like showing you the whole process and it will be very easy for you to follow that. Um, I want to say a little bit about the structure of each session. I already told you in the email, but I want to say a little bit more uh, just so you know what's going on. So in each session, we will be working on uh, a stage, one of the stages of the process, wh whether it's painting or later on gilding. Um, we will focus on that stage. Some stages will be very simple. So it will be maybe only layering, uh, covering surfaces. Some stages might be a bit more complex. So we will uh, need to do a bit more than just one, than just covering the surface. Uh, so some stages may, may seem complicated to you, um that's okay if you feel overwhelmed a little bit overwhelmed that's okay that's why we have recordings so we can go back to it during the week in between the sessions um if you know if you need some support during the week or if you want to if you feel like maybe you weren't able to do everything that i demonstrated on during the session 
that's perfectly fine. That's why we have the week in between. Uh, so, so please try not to, if possible, to stress if you, if you weren't, be, uh, weren't able to do everything that I demonstrated in the two hour session uh, in the same time. Uh, two hours is actually not that much time. Uh, so usually these processes take quite a long time. Uh, so because I have more experience, I am able to do it a bit faster. Uh, but I'm, I, you know, I don't expect you to uh, to be able to do this, this exactly in the same pace as me. Uh, I do actually expect that you will need a bit more time, you know, in between sessions. So just to reassure you and put your mind at ease. Um, there is no, as well, there isn't any pressure, time pressure here. Um, everyone has a different rhythm. So you will see as you go through this process, some people do it faster, some people do it slower. And this is not to compare yourself to someone else, or there is no aim to do it in a certain pace. Everyone has a different um, personality and different way of working and that shows in this work and it's actually wonderful that you know you are all different um something that is really important to me is um, remembering uh, why you are doing it so this can be different reasons for you it's a very prayer, prayerful experience. It can help you with your prayer, with your, or it can help you to find that space for a quietness, sort of meditation, quietness, contemplation. Um, so um, th these reasons are very important, sometimes easy to forget. So every now and then, if you feel a bit overwhelmed, stressed, nervous, uh, Try to remember that, and that should help you to go back to the experience rather than thinking about the, you know, the result, if you're happy with your result or not. Uh, so just, just to give you some advice how to feel a bit more at ease and not to let your, you know, the stress and expectations uh, to affect this process too much. If there is frustration and things like that, you are welcome to um, talk to email me in between the session sessions and I will advise you how to recover things. There is always uh, so-called mistakes. Uh, however, I like not to call them mistakes. More, It's more experience. We all need to go through these uh, experiences to learn. So if something like this happens, you, uh, I will be also showing what are possible, you know, like troubles um, that can happen in the process. I, I can sometimes just show you and then recover within one session. But as well, if this happens, I will in, in the email take you through um, this process, how to recover whatever happened there, or reassure you that this is really not a problem. Uh, so yeah, so this is this is really important to me uh, and to be as well in touch with, with you as much as of course you want. Uh, so I, I know uh, how are you doing in the process. Um, each session will have a very, very short introduction of what we will be doing. Then um, there will be a demonstration uh, of uh, each stage uh, that we are going through in the in the session, uh, then I mean, it may be another explanation, and then going back to the demonstration. Some, as I said, some processes, some stages will be very simple and repetitive. So you are welcome to work along with me. There will be some parts of the process that it's good to watch first and then do it yourself. But of course, this is your decision as well. Uh, tonight, what we will be doing tonight. Uh, this is a very first uh, stage of our process of creating this icon of Mary. Uh, this is just an image of Mary on her own. Uh, this is quite unusual for Eastern tradition for Mary to be on her own. However, it, becoming more, it's, it is becoming more common as the tradition changes uh, and 
uh, changes all the time. Uh, so this image comes from um, the image of passion, of um, uh, cross, crucifixion, and Mary um, grieving the loss. So just to explain, uh, you know, the origins of that image. Uh, in tonight's session, we will transfer this image onto our panels. But before we, we start transferring, we will do a couple of exercises just to prepare, just to ease into the process. So we don't start straight away. There is some transition from whatever we are doing, from whatever our experiences um, in this, in any kind of art. Uh, into uh, actually uh, painting our icons. So first we will work on the paper using our tracing paper, but work uh, onto the paper. Um, secondly, we will uh, transfer again onto a tracing paper and then, uh, then trace onto our panels. Uh, in the end of the session, I will show you how to and explain how to make uh, egg medium. I will also explain what it is and what it does and show you how to mix uh, uh, one of the pigments. Uh, I also always want to um, see how everything is going within the session. I can more or less tell how much time things will take, but sometimes th there is certain degree of unpredictability. Um, just to let you know, some sessions might be a bit, run a bit over the time, like five, 10 minutes, depending on how many questions. Some sessions may be short, slightly shorter, like maybe five minutes, if the process goes really smoothly. So we will see there is a, a degree of flexibility here. However, everything is very um, strongly structured. Okay, so I would like to slowly start. Um, again, I wanna welcome everyone. Uh, I know there's a quite a big group here, so we don't really have the time to, for everyone to um, talk about um, you know, their experiences, but um, there will be time for questions. And as you ask a, que ask a question, you can introduce yourself if you want. Uh, so this is your choice. I will now change to another camera. Uh, one one more thing that I forgot to say as I uh, as I work on the stages that take a little bit more time, uh, I usually uh, put the put uh, orthodox music through. Uh, so we can have that space, some that kind of space created uh, for working together, and it helps you to it helps you to um, relax in the process and feel a bit more like in a meditative, uh, contemplative state. Uh, so first of all, what you will need paper and uh, your pencil, whatever pencil you are using. Um, using two different kinds of pencils. Sometimes I like to use this one because it's sometimes more precise, especially if I'm working on a very small size. Um, but this kind of pencil, uh, ordinary, it's uh, good as well. Uh, depending, usually I recommend using HB, but if you're doing a bit more drawing, you can use softer um, pencil as well. Uh, what we will do, uh, we will take our image. So we will have our image and tracing paper as well. Um, also masking tape um, or any other kind of tape. Um, a small, a little advice. If you feeling like your hand is a bit stiff or you're not feeling, sometimes you don't feel ready to start, what you can do, you can do a couple of lines, different shapes, lines, doesn't really matter, just to warm up your wrist, your hand. Uh, so if we start, um, just sit down to our, you know, our painting session or drawing session, uh, usually it might be the case that our hand is not ready 
to start doing precise shapes. So you can just do a couple of lines, it can be straight lines, circles, very wavy lines, doesn't really matter as long as it's uh, some, as you put something on the paper. Once you do this, so this is this could be the case with, before each session. If you feel like your hand is not ready to work, um, after you feel a bit more warmed up, uh, you can start working. And today, what we will do. Uh, so if you take your image first without your panel, uh, if that helps, you can tape it, use masking tape. To tape it. Sometimes, if it's not attached to the, you know, to your to your desk, it can move, um, and that makes it a bit tricky to work. So you can tape it. Usually, two places are enough. And then you can place your tracing paper on the top of your image. And again, you can tape it a bit either to the table or if you have paper to your paper. Doesn't really matter as long as it's uh, in images in place and tracing paper is in place. And then whichever pencil you want to work with, what we will do, we will be going over tracing the lines to create our design. Don't worry, this is not the actual design that we will then transfer onto our panel. This is just a preparation and practice before doing an actual image. So just going over the lines, drawing. I recommend trying to short lines rather than trying to get one straight away. Makes it easier for our hand, to uh, easier to control. I know as well that some people uh, prefer to watch the session and then do um, whatever we did in the session in their own time. You can start with uh, details that, that, that don't seem so difficult and important. So garments or lines outside. Uh, this part of the process is where we can repeat the lines a couple of times in the same place. Um, because when we do this movement, uh, going with the shape or uh, our, uh, our icon, our hand actually learns the shapes. So it's good to do it a couple of times in the same place. So repeat the line. couple of times.
and you can leave the face for the, as a, for the last last part of this exercise. If you have time and, uh, for this, you can even do it more than once. So after, you know, within the between, between the sessions, you can do it many times. It will give you a better understanding of the image. And we can do a halo as well. We don't need to transfer the right, the writing, the inscriptions. Inscription, inscriptions come as a very last thing, so you can forget about the inscriptions just now. Uh, so this, this is just a preparation, an exercise preparation to take you to help you to understand shapes and proportions. You can even look into, um, you know, how different things are relate, like relating to other things. Even though you're tracing, it's good to have some sort of understanding of that, and just to get your your hand uh, used to to the shapes. Um, that we will be working on. Uh, so this is after this exercise, we will do the tracing again. All of this process today, you can do many times uh, using the paper. Uh, so it is possible to just transfer this, your image instead of to the panel, to the paper. Uh, so we will do another one, exactly the same. But this time, this will be the, um, the design, the drawing that we will transfer onto our panels. So we will use it for our icon. So again, taping and drawing the shape, the lines onto the tracing paper again.
Okay, uh, so once the drawing is um, transferred, the lines are, I forgot about one line, so it's good to check, uh, look at it again and recheck if you have transferred everything. <clears throat> so once I, we have done it, we will transfer this onto our panels. So everyone has slightly different panel, which is okay, because we can adjust it. So I'll show you on the paper. This is where we are. So we only need really, really uh, main simple lines. We don't need to transfer all the shading. We just need the structure here. Um, and then I, I will be working on this panel. So it's a small panel. Uh, what is good to do, it's actually really good to then um, decide where you want to place uh, your image within your panel, uh, and then cut the uh, this, the um, paper close to the uh, shape to the size of your panel because it will be very tricky to attach it. So you can you can draw doesn't have to be straight as long as it's more or less your. Um, the size or uh, and the shape of your panel. So everyone will have slightly different. For people that have a panel with um, raised border, you can treat border as an extra, extra uh, surface. So like put the place, the image uh, inside the panel. So the halo uh, can come out a little bit, but more or less it's within the, um, the area that is not your border. Uh, so just cut uh, your image, your paper. And then we place our paper, oh, sorry, I forgot. We, we try to decide where the paper goes and then we turn this over and we will be using just one pigment. So we will be using just one pigment, red ochre. We are going to use it dry. So without our med medium, without any water, without any mixing. Uh, so the image will go this way, but we need to turn the page, the paper, over to the reverse. So reverse of our uh, image, our, our paper. Uh, and then using your biggest brush, we will um, dust over and rub in the pigment into our paper, just where the lines are. So this will work as a carbon, a sort of carbon paper for the transfer onto the panel. So being gentle with your brushes because these are very delicate brushes. Um, if it goes obviously more than the lines, that's fine, but you don't need it everywhere. You need it where your lines are.
So making sure that you have it for, uh, everywhere where your lines are. So because otherwise lines won't transfer. Uh, usually there is, um, you end up having too much powder on your uh, paper. So what we can do, we can take the, uh, the excess of the um, powder back to the container. Okay, and now we will place this, and again, turn it over, place it on our panel. Uh, you can move it slightly depending on the uh, dimensions of your panel, size of your panel. You can move it a bit to the right, to the left, uh, top, bottom. There is not just one way to, for this to be, uh, to be painted, to be done. Um, it does not have to be perfectly central, uh, so symmetrical, especially because the face is tilted, so there is more space and room on this side, it's okay to move it a bit to this side and have a bit more of the frame here, or keep it in the middle, so you can move it about for a, for a while, just so you can see what kind of sort of effect you will get if it's in a different places. Uh, as long as the halo is um, fits inside your panel, so the full halo is on your panel. Uh, I will do it like this, but you can take your time out. I will do it uh, slowly. Um, it's plenty of time. We don't need to rush with this. And then tape it again. You can tape it to put the tape around the back of your panel. This way you will be able to move your panel as you're transferring your image. Okay, so I'll do it slowly just to give chance those who are doing it with me um, to um, get the stage uh, ready. So I wait a um, couple of seconds just to um, keep it slow, nice and slow. Um, It's good to have your image at hand, original that you are using, your print, because um, you will be going back to it. Uh, you will be relating to it all the time. I will move it a bit because it's um, the light is reflecting on it. It might be a bit distracting for you, but keep your image close to you. Or maybe I'll just move it out of the way. So keep your image close to you because as we transfer, every time we transfer or do another line, we tend to change things. So it's good to have uh, that reference uh, to go back to. Uh, what we will be doing now, we need to go over our lines with our pencil, or if you have a pen, that's fine as well, uh, again. Uh, pressing a bit harder. So as we press harder, because there is pigment on the other side, this will um, leave a mark on our gesso panel. So this is this work, works like a carbon paper. Um, we need to go over all our lines. You need to press a bit harder, but doesn't have to be extremely hard. If you press too hard, your hand becomes very stiff and very tired really quickly. So be gentle on your hand, but press more harder than you would normally when you draw. Uh, so what I will do now, I will do the whole transfer. You can watch, you can do it along with me, but I will put the music through. Uh, 
it will take a wee bit also. I know that you are doing it. So I'll, I'll say maybe out about 20 minutes for this stage, just so we don't rush with the process. Uh, and I will play the music. <laughs>
Okay, uh, so before I continue uh, with the next step, I wanted to check if there are any questions. So I will stop the uh, share just so I can see you better. So it, there is a little like you can raise your hand. Um, if there are any questions, uh, just before we move on to the next step, uh, just wanted to check with you. If you don't, if no one says anything, that, and then I will assume that there aren't any questions at this stage. Uh, and of course, later on, you can ask uh, after the session, in between the sessions as well. Sometimes there are more questions, um, you know, later on. So just wanted to check with you. If no, I will slowly move towards the next step of our, to, uh, our session tonight. Okay, so I think I will slowly go into the next part of the process. Um, going back, give me two seconds. I need to make sure that I'm sharing for later for them. Yeah, that's fine. Um, music as well. Um, so now, once we went over our lines, uh, we can remove the tracing paper. Uh, I recommend uh, doing just this just on one uh, end. So if you taped on both to to play in two places, just remove from one uh, place uh, at first. And you can have a little peek just to see if you uh, transferred all the lines. If not, then you can easily place it back in exactly the same uh, place. Uh, but if you see you transferred all the lines, you can remove the tracing paper. It is good to keep your uh, design. Uh, if you have a sketchbook, you can put it in your sketchbook. Usually it's good to tape it to a sheet of paper because you've got um, uh, your powder that is gonna leave marks. Uh, and keep, keep just keep it as a, uh, like a record of the process or a memory of the process, or you can use it another time. So we've got all our lines transferred. They will be quite uh, faint. Uh, this is the nature of this process, uh, but we will be um, making them stronger and permanent with paint. So now uh, we are moving into starting to work with our paint a little bit. Uh, so this is uh, the next part. Uh, this is what we will do. So you can, you can put your panel aside um, and just have a space. I will give you time for you to, so you can go and prepare a medium. So don't worry about it. There is no rush, plenty time. I will uh, demonstrate first and then I will give you time. I will say how much uh, time. Uh, I sent a, a little video to everyone. This was just to give you a first sort of uh, preview of the of the preparation of a medium. So you so you don't come to this session and this is the first time you'll see. Uh, but of course, this was just a time lapse with time, without talking. So now uh, uh, you will understand much more. Uh, it's not difficult. You just need to uh, see it once or twice, and then you're able to do it easily yourself. It is a bit like separating yolk and white in the kitchen. The only thing you need to be a bit more careful uh, to keep the, the yolk intact until it's transferred into your container. So what we need is uh, egg, one egg, uh, some sort of jar or container that we can that you can close. This is important because if it's not closed, uh, uh, it, it dries, so the, the liquid evaporates, and then you can't really use it. Uh, and we will need, as I said in the email, either white wine or lager. I will be using lager. 
doesn't have to this is not an advert doesn't have to be the um any particular just as long as it's a light beer um and what we need to do we need to separate yolk from white and then transfer it uh, to our container. You want to be quite careful in a sense you don't want to break the membrane that is on the egg. Um, so I prepared a couple of things. In the video, you see, I do it in the sink. This is much better. So I'm only doing this here because of the where is my camera is. Um, but it's much better to have uh, what access to running water as you do it. In, the only important thing is don't put your egg uh, as you're holding it and directly under the stream of water. It will most likely break your membrane. So first of all, we need to break the shell. So you can use a knife. Uh, or a spoon with like hard, like sharper edge, anything that will break. This is not going to break, so I'm going to use something else. Uh, so anything that will break the shell. It's a very hard one. Uh, being careful if you have sharp edges here, just not to uh, go too fast so you don't break your membrane. And then uh, transfer the yolk onto your hand. And let all the white, sometimes it's thicker, so you need to, it takes a wee bit longer. Let all the white run down of the um, yolk, of the membrane. So it can take quite a while. You might need to move it from one hand to another. That's why when you have a sink, you know, and running water, it's much easier because you can wash your hands. So just do it a couple of times, making sure uh, that all the white is off the yolk. When you wash, you know, when you do, when you do it with the running water, you can wash your hands sort of in, the mid, in, in between handling the yolk. But I will be just uh, using the paper now. And once this is done, we need to transfer the yolk onto our container. So what we do, we can you can either use your nails, or if you have a, have a fork or a knife with a sharp with a sharp end, you can you can pierce it like this. But you need to be careful not to let the membrane run into your um, container. We don't want to use the membrane. So all we need here is what's inside the membrane, the pure yolk. So what I do, I hold it like this, very gently, not uh, squeezing, not uh, like closing my hand too much, just like this. And then holding it like this. You won't be able to see exactly, but I will show you how to pierce it. And then hold it like this and then squeeze out. Uh, so you can use um, like sharp knife. Uh, if you have nails, you can use your nails like this. Just pinch it. And then squeeze it out into your container. Like help yourself with your finger. And... Uh, Make sure that the membrane, you hold the membrane back in your hand. Uh, it's very tricky to transfer all of it. So usually you would have a little bit left uh, in your hand. You can try a bit more, but not too much, because if you do too much, you will let the membrane go into the container. Uh, so, and then wash your hands, of course. It's much more cleaner when you do it uh, with the running water. It's a bit trickier when you don't have that access to that. Okay, so once your uh, yolk is in your container, we need to add al our alcohol. So uh, I will be using lager. You can use white wine. You can also use white wine vinegar with this, this method. So this is a Russian method uh, for egg tempera. This is called egg tempera. Uh, 
And I will explain what this does uh, in a wee second. Uh, so we will add our lager, our light beer. Uh, don't use any beer that is like flavored. So it's as pure as possible. Of course, there are additives, but we want to make sure there isn't any extra stuff in it. Uh, we need exactly the same volume of uh, alcohol as, um, as our uh, egg yolk. So it doesn't have to be very precise, you know, like in a chemistry lab, more or less the same amount. Usually what I do, I look at the jar and you see the, when you see the level and then add another one like this, another volume like this. So that's enough, does not have to be measured with special measuring cups. Some people feel comfortable, prefer that, that's okay, but it doesn't have to. So just adding. Okay, once you have done it, we just need to mix it. I'm going to mix it like this, but you can use a spoon. Uh, my lager is already flat because you can use it um, a little bit after it was opened. You know, it doesn't have to be just freshly opened. But if your lager is freshly opened, of course, it's going to have a fizz. That's fine. Don't worry. It will flatten as it sits. So it's not a problem. So just making sure it mixed, it, it's, it is mixed very well. Um, so you don't want anything separ like separated, any bits, any lumps, any bits. And this is our uh, medium or emulsion. It's called emulsion or egg medium or egg yolk medium. Uh, what do we use it for? This is used to bind our powder because we will be using paints in powder. Um, this is used to bind it together, to keep it together, hold it together. Um, so this is what we use it for. And now uh, uh, what I want, I'm going to say, uh, you can make your own. So I'll, I'll give you maybe about 10 minutes. I think that should, that should be good. So maybe uh, 20 past eight, uh, I will continue with the, with the process. But at the moment, if every, anyone, uh, everyone would like to, uh, just go and make their own uh, egg medium. Mm -hmm. So ten, uh, 20 past, uh, I will continue. May I ask a question? <laughs> yes, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure I have any lager. Would other beer do ale would real ale do <laughs> uh, so i've not tried with ale but i think it should be okay okay and if uh, did you mention white vinegar as well that might work yeah white wine vinegar not white vinegar though right right and, and yeah same, yeah that would, that would be the same proportions as well yeah yeah same proportion yeah Thank you very much yeah. you're welcome Hi, Sha. Yes. Hi, this is Lara. Um, oh. I've been looking for the image in my emails and I don't have it. You don't have it, okay. Uh, or do you have a printer there? I do, yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you again. I don't know how it didn't uh, uh, come to you. Okay, no worries. Just one of those things. I also have another mm. question. Yeah. About the music. Yeah which is very beautiful. Who, who is performing it? So the music is, uh, is, her name is Divna. I can send as well in the email because it will be difficult for me even to say, you know, uh, to say the name. She's from Serbia. Ah, right. Uh, so it's quite a lot. Um, she's recorded quite a lot of Orthodox music that is very quiet, if, if you like. You probably noticed from the um from the from the recordings it's not that kind of music that is too dramatic yeah so it's perfect for um yeah for this kind oh, of lovely and yeah, what, it's, how can i get hold of it so uh i found it on 
one of the you know the subscriptions like uh, YouTube Music, but it's I'm sure it's also on other ones. Nice. Uh, you can find something on YouTube. Um, I think you should be able to um, to buy a CD. I think. Right, okay. so I, so yeah. once, I think, once I get her name, I can just look her up on Amazon. Yeah, you can just look around. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 very I think it's quite it's fairly popular, so it should shouldn't be diff too difficult um to find. And is she singing in Serbian? Yeah, so this is um uh, old church Slavonic. Ah, okay. But a bit there, there are differences. So this one is like particular for Serbia. Right. It would be different in Russia, for example, but right. it's not exactly Serbian. Right. Do you know, are you familiar with Ar Arvov Het? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So he's, he's, I, I've sung his Ave Maria in um, church, Russian, I think it is. Mm -hmm. and yeah. That's about a minute long, I think. It's very short, but very complex. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. And it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I'm just looking now to I'm gonna need to um it's not so easy, isn't it? Okay. Okay, I just uh, forwarded the image to you. Lovely, thank you. If you can check, because I hope this was your email. You know, when you're doing many things. Um, Not come through yet. Sometimes it takes a wee bit, doesn't oh. it? Aha, yes, it is. Yes, perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry that you didn't, I don't know what happened. No, it's just it's one of those things, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, not a big disaster or anything. Right, okay, I'll go and print that out now then. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. So we still have a couple of minutes.
Okay, so slowly, slowly, I will start uh, demonstrating the second, well, the next part of the of the process. So, what we need for this, we need uh, our palettes. I'm using this plastic one, but also you can use, as I said, in the material ceramic one that you saw just before. Uh, um, same pigment, red ochre, that we were using. Some of you have it like slightly lighter, uh, like this. Doesn't this doesn't matter? Uh, they're all okay. So just uh, just as long as it's red ochre, our egg medium, and water. Uh, and I will show you how to how to mix. This will uh, be uh, very similar with other pigments as well. Um, you can use your me medium brush, uh, so medium size brush. Uh, if you have a synthetic brush at hand, uh, that's something that you have, you can use that. If not, you can use uh, your regular brush that you've got for your course. Um, we will be also measuring with the, with the brush. So there is a proportion for egg and water. Well, for each one uh, drop of egg, we will use three, three drops of water. I will repeat that throughout the course, so don't worry. And then you can always ask me, but don't worry if you forget. Um, this is a, our usual proportion. It will uh, be different with the pigments, but I will be taking you through that as well. So if we need to just, just use one section. What we will do, we take uh, maybe two brushes, um, of egg and place it uh, on our palette. So more or less that much, we don't, we need very small amount, more or less that much of egg medium. And then we will add pigment. So the brush is slightly damp now. Uh, we can use it to pick up the, the powder, but make sure that your uh, there's no dripping, uh, you know, egg into the powder. So making sure uh, it is uh, damp, but it's not too wet. We will take maybe four brushes of um, powder and mix it with uh, our egg. So just mixing, making sure there isn't any grain um, left. So mix it really nicely, uh, slowly and really, really well. This is not something that you do fast. So just mixing, making sure everything is well mixed. Once uh, our powder is mixed with egg yolk, so egg medium, we can add water to it. So three times more water than, um, than egg. We added two drops of, or two brushes of egg. We need, we need six brushes of water. Again, they don't have to be measured amazingly precisely, as long as it's more or less um, that proportion, that ratio. One, two, three. And this is our mix. Mix it again so it's all nicely mixed. And then take off a bit of the uh, paint of your brush on the edge of your of your palette. So th so the brush is not too wet. Then 
I'll show you on the paper. This is more or less what we want. So it's not really very dark, but it's dark, but it's not very faint either. So this is, um, if you want, you can make a couple of lines on the paper before you start working on your panel, on your icon. This is similar to, to starting to work with pencil. Uh, you want to try it out first, see, you know, like get used to it, see how it works, see how different pressure, different way of moving your brush, um, how this works. Then you can change into your smallest brush because we will be working with a tiny brush. So we don't have to take too much of the paint, but you can test again on the paper what happened, what happens if you take a little bit more, a little bit less. So just really trying it out rather than, you know, just following the instructions. See what happens when you press more, see what happens when you're very light with your hand slower, faster, just really getting used to, to handling the brush and this, this paint, this technique.
So this is where we uh, need to be by the next session. Uh, just have all your lines painted with red ochre. Um, before I give you a chance to ask questions, I wanted to say, uh, please send me a photo of your image at this stage completed. Uh, Any time in the next week, but if you can manage before the weekend, if you can manage, or, or before Sunday. Uh, tomorrow I will uh, email everyone with a photo of this image and the access um, information to access the recording. Uh, and of course, before the next session, I will email information of what we will be doing on the next session and how to prepare. Uh, so this is where we are. I'm going to stop the share just so I can see everyone. And I wanted to say, oh, oh sorry, I'm a bit quiet because I didn't move this microphone. Thank you. Um, so can you hear me well now? I hope <laughs> it should be OK. I forgot to move the microphone. Um, OK, so uh, if let me know if there are any questions before we complete, before we, uh, we complete for tonight. Um, question. Uh, Lara, you wanted to ask? Yeah, I've just um, traced my image and I've got a smaller Dela board. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. It just fits. It's got millimetres to spare at the side. Is that That's fine. Is it okay? That's fine. As long as the halo is on the panel. Yeah, it's just on the panel. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I can see just on the edge. That's okay, that's okay. fine. Thank you. Um, I have a question about the um, the egg tempera. Yeah. Do Does it does it keep for like, for ne can we keep it till next week or do we have to like make it each week? Yeah, so egg tempera can even keep, if you, 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 you close your uh, jar or container, put it in the fridge mm -hmm. and sometimes even two weeks or even longer. Oh, brilliant. Okay, so, yeah, thank you. you're welcome. Anyone else would like to ask? I'll just give you a, a couple of minutes just to make sure everyone has a chance to ask if they want to. My Egg mixture turned out quite runny and the paint turned out quite runny. Is that okay? Is that right? That's fine. At this stage, we are not aiming for um, any kind of, uh, you know, um, tone for the lines. You don't want them all dark or light. It's just about uh, making them permanent. Okay. So that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Anyone else would like to? ask about something if there is anything as you go throughout the week i don't know this this stage maybe it's the short probably the shortest stage i think but still if you will wor be working during the week if you have any question anything arises you can email me uh, so i will be slowly completing for tonight I wanted to say thank you all for um, being in this session, participating and uh, working along with me. Um, I hope you have a really good week. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you uh, next Sunday. Um, and tomorrow we'll uh, receive the email. Uh, if you want to go through the session again, is anyone else wanted to, to ask anything before we finish? No. Okay. Okay. So, um, okay. So I'll see you all next week. And I will be in touch with you in between the sessions. Uh, have a good night and thank you again for tonight. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank 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 you.